Jet Ison. Any other Stargate character that you would uh, have uh, played if given the chance? It's going to sound like a cop out, but no, because I think they did it well. You know, okay. like as much fun as it would be to play McKay, David Hewlett killed it. Uh, same with Shank, same with RDA, same with Amanda Tapping. Um, now, that being said, when when we started filming SGU, I was one of the only over I was the only overweight actor auditioning to play Eli. Uh, so when I booked it, I gained I've yo-yoed my whole life, but I gained weight for Ugly Betty. And then I kind of started working regularly because of it. When I booked SGU, I pulled Brad and Rob aside and I said, hey, it's really important to me if you're okay with it that Eli loses weight during this show. It's a survival show. We have horrible access to food, so it would make sense anyway. Mm -hmm. Plus, I want to feel more healthy and get some energy back. Um, and I think it could be fun for the character, you know? So the minute we started filming, I started losing weight. If you watch the show again, you'll see me lose about 40 pounds over two years. And then I lost the rest after. Um, one, of the re one of the things while doing it that was in my mind, and this was before Guardians of the Galaxy or anything, was that sort of Chris Pratt thing. I like the idea, because I've never done it, of being the action hero, of being the James Bond, of being that... Um, it's, a, it's something I haven't gotten a chance to try on that I would really, really like. And I'm lucky in that I've lost enough weight and, and worked out enough that I've gotten some opportunities, but I haven't gotten the actual chance to yet. It's just a matter of time, man. You knock on every piece of wood. I <laughs> <laughs> George, but Foden that's a weird thing too. I mean, we don't talk about it much as actors. If you watch the Brie Larson video, I highly recommend it because if we don't get a job, you don't hear about it. Mm. But some of the roles that I've been either close to or up for, it's really hard as somebody who, who somebody who loves fandom, who loves doing conventions, to not talk about it. Because when I'm up for a role that I want, that I know fans will freak out over, all I'm thinking about is the fans. Mm -hmm. I'm like, God, can you imagine at Comic-Con? They're like, wait, what? Did Eli Wallace is going to play Flash? You know? Yeah. Like, that it means a lot to me. And I almost feel like you guys are all my family and I'm trying to make you proud. <laughs> well, you know, I think we're all connected. We we're invested. We're here. Anyone who's in the sound of my voice, because we're invested in the product that you guys created as an ensemble. And so, yeah, yeah any, any success that you have, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and per Mr. Gibbs, by the way, sorry to look at chat uh, and travelers. I loved travelers. And if you haven't watched it, please watch it. Cause first of all, you'll see everyone from Stargate. <laughs> you uh, sure will. <laughs> But Patrick's but great. And Patrick Gilmore, mm -hmm. he's always amazing. Patrick Gilmore in Travelers. I texted him maybe every episode saying, you are so good. Yeah. He's on the phone and you can't take your eyes off of him. Yeah. He is so good. Yeah, he's very magnetic. George Ugh. Fotis, Dram, Dramaciotis. Nice. Sorry, George. Well I completely butchered that. How was it forming a relationship with Robert Carlyle? Because these two characters have such a complicated relationship as well. There's, there is a competitive side. There's a little bit of a mentor mentee side. And then at the end of it, in my, you know, the, one of the greatest lines of that show, you realize that you've surpassed him. Yeah. It always makes me think of the lawnmower man line. You realize Dr. D'Angelo, my intelligence has surpassed yours. That's what I was thinking of that whole freaking scene. But it, I, this is a bit insider, but, when you're number oh, one on a call sheet, <laughs> when you're number one on a call sheet, it's not just acting. You're also setting the tone for the for the set. You're setting the tone for the series, for the show, for the whatever. So there are some horrible number ones out there who make set toxic and just unbearable. And then there are good ones who make set so much fun you never want to leave the show. Um, I give a lot of credit and a lot of uh, pats on the back to Robert Carlyle because from minute one, he was great. And I can say to me, he was great. I felt like I became friends with him faster than anyone else. Uh, even on planes, we would stay up having a drink, talking about life and about, not even about the show. And I trusted him. I loved working with him. Uh, in full transparency, when I heard he was playing Rush, I was like, who? And I had to Google him. And I'm like, oh, I've seen right. his work. Yeah. But it's not like, you know, he was the most famous person in the world in my mind. But I respect the crap out of his work um, and him. And so I think that helped a lot, uh, that sort of early friendship. Uh, and it, it sounds like fan service, but every single person, I, I would almost get lost in a scene watching them work. 
you know, it was distracting, uh, but he did a really good job. A lot of credit to him having been number one on a few things. Now it's tough when you're tired. You can't be tired. No, everyone's watching you know? at you and taking a lot of their cues from you. Yep. Stefan Ames, would you be a uh, game for another uh, Stargate role playing game session? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, I love playing role playing games, especially when I know them. Uh, as I said, <laughs> I've been DMing a lot during the pandemic. I actually DM custom one shots for people via my Twitch now. We're doing one tomorrow, actually, at three. Okay. Um, I love, I didn't know it at the time because I've always played D&D &D or, or role playing games. I didn't know at the time, but as a storyteller, I love helping people tell a story. And that's what you are as a DM, you know? Or, as, or you know, I like Alexis. He's like my brother uh great guys they're just fun games this is the thing about conventions when we get invited to conventions which <clears throat> uh when we get invited to conventions it's a blast because we all love each other it's dangerous you invite me and rainbow sun franks and alexis to a convention <laughs> no one's sleeping um Michael Shanks, Lexa, and I became tight at a convention. Uh, ben Browder, Robert Ricardo, we explore mm -hmm. together. Like we get along. So playing games with my friends is fun, whether or not I'm good at them, you know? Do, do that being said, can I, can I get on soapboxes for a quick second? Uh, be my guest. Oh, I just want to say to everybody, uh, because people always ask me about like, will you come to a con? Will you come to this con? Just so you guys know, Absolutely, it's wonderful to hear as an actor to, that we want you to con, but it's actually not up to us. What I recommend is, whether it's me or other people, reach out to the con near you or whatever that you want them at and say, I want this guest, because it's up to the convention to reach out to us and, and invite us and organize it. For the most part, there's only a few people who don't. For the most part, we all love doing it. We love hanging out with you all, meeting you all, taking pictures, having a good time, making memories. Um, and especially if you're a fan of SGU or us, please do because there's a few cons out there that for some reason will have like all stargate conventions but only invite sg1 in atlantis and yeah. i don't mind if i'm not invited but it always bothers me when i don't see anyone from sgu on the list because that feels yep. personal yep so if you want us there please reach out to them we'll be there in a heartbeat i can't underline cannot underline that enough absolutely agree diana dearna streaming <laughs> i i have to know what this is what triggered your love of llamas Oh God. So Deanna is one of my mods and oh, okay. because of Twitch, there's a running gag. Uh, so this is a green screen behind me. Um, <laughs> so there's a running gag that I'm hiding something and it's somehow become about Lom. It's because of Hamilton. There's a line in Hamilton where Alexander Hamilton played by Lin-Manuel says, and on my life, Eliza. But every time I hear it, it sounds like I'm a llama lover. Every time if you go back and listen to it, it sounds like, and I'm a llama lover. And so llamas have become this running <laughs> joke on my Twitch. <laughs> so that's what that is, Dierna. <laughs> Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.